Hello YouTube, this is Canadian folk musician Jesse Ferguson and today I'm going to bring you a video on how to quickly and easily and cheaply set up a little recording studio in your basement, your closet, your spare bedroom, whatever you have. So if you're like me, yeah, you don't, you're a musician and you want to have some recordings published uh, through iTunes, Amazon, CD Baby or just to give them out to your friends and family uh, but you don't have a lot of money to spend, uh, you're not a sound technician, somebody who is an expert on setting up and producing music, but you want to be able to just produce something uh, of your music, um, then this is the video for you. I'm going to basically you know, spare you the, uh, the industry specialized jargon and just give you the straightforward how can I s record my music as cheaply as possible, as easily as possible, in as, in as small a space as possible, including being able to set up your system and tear it down quickly uh, if you don't have a space that you can just leave your gear or your studio all set up, which was the case for myself. Living in an apartment, living in a small house, if you've got roommates, whatever, small children, you don't, just don't have the room or the, the, the resources to devote to it. So how can you still produce a pretty decent product, recording-wise, I've got a few of my CDs here. I've recorded four CDs myself using a similar setup to this. It doesn't look fancy, but it produces pretty reasonable results. So, this will work if you want to produce actual physical hard copy CDs. That's another step you would do down the road. Uh, but, you know, also obviously if you want to just produce MP3s for sale on various uh, websites or services and things like that. So it doesn't matter if you want to produce hard copy CDs or MP3s or both. This will do the job and get you set up for that. So what do you need? I'll put this in down in the description of the video. You'll see the, the absolute bare bones. What do I need to set up a little recording studio? So the first thing obviously is you need some kind of a computer. You can have a desktop or a laptop. It can be PC or Mac. Uh, but you need a decent computer with uh, some good processing speed. So if you have a really old computer that's really slow, uh, it's not going to produce good audio results for you. You need a fast processor in your computer. Uh, to uh, be able to take the information, the audio information from a microphone and render it quickly enough, especially if you start doing multiple layers in your recording. So if you start recording your guitar or your piano and then you want to later go back and add a layer for your vocal, the computer has to be able to process that information so that there's not a lag between the two once you merge the layers back together. Uh, so you don't need a really expensive computer. If you go with a PC, it's a lot cheaper. I have a Lenovo laptop. I think it was $600, not particularly expensive, but it does have a pretty good Intel processor in it. Um, again, I'm not going to get into all the technical side of all that. I'm not much of an expert on that anyway. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is a microphone. I have some PV microphones that aren't very expensive. Uh, I believe they're you know $200 each. It's just a vocal microphone. You can buy also instrument microphones, which I think are called condenser microphones. Uh, those are very expensive. In my experience, you don't need them. I mean, if you're going to be producing things that are for, you know, you know, a major record label, obviously you can get into all kinds of fancy microphones. I just have a standard PV microphone. I'll put what kind of microphone it is in the uh, description of this video. I actually got them for free from a friend who was getting rid of some old microphones. They still work. I have them for several, several years at this point. If you take care of your equipment, you'll have it forever. You can probably sell it too if you sort of lose interest or change your uh, your needs. So a microphone stand, this one is uh, an ultra stand I believe, 30 or 40 dollars. Um, if you're a musician already you probably already have some of this equipment, microphone, microphone stand and all that. If not then you'll have to you know outlay a little bit of money. I mean you probably already have a computer if you're watching YouTube so that's not really an expense for this this hobby. Um, next thing is obviously uh, patch cords for microphones. Uh, you know, you can spend you know twenty or thirty dollars on a patch cord, um, patch cords for your your guitar or a keyboard, whatever you need. Uh, now, the next thing you need is an audio interface. Now, your computer has a sound card, but unless you buy a really top end computer, or you could build your own if you have a desktop or something like that, the sound card, which is the little computer chip that processes sound in your computer, is not going to be able to handle the richness of sound that comes through from a microphone or from an acoustic guitar. It just won't produce good results. If you've ever tried this, you know that it doesn't work. Um, so what you need is a little box, 
like this one that I I bought several years ago from uh, M Audio. It's called I call it an M box for for M Audio, um, but you know you can get different brands for them. I'll, again, I'll put down what kind I use down in the description box. This is about this is about the cheapest one you could buy. That will do the job. And what it is is basically another sound card, another little bit of computer software uh, or hardware actually that processes the sound that comes in from your microphone. So it basically takes the really rich uh, audio signal and basically packages it in a format that your computer can swallow or register. So it basically takes that rich sound and digests it in a way that makes it so that your computer can understand it. So it's an external little d device and I think I paid about $70 on that one. M-Box. M-Audio is the, the brand I recommend. I've used uh, another version of that at another sound uh, lab that I was using before. Highly recommended. It's lasted me five years now and I've, I've recorded three CDs on it. For 60 or $70, you really can't go wrong. So that's your audio interface. The next thing you need is uh, some headphones. You can get, these are Sony headphones, you know, for, for, you know, sound editing and things like that. You could just use the headphones from your iPod. But what you want is one with a bit of a longer cord. You don't want to be trying to, to play your guitar on through the microphone and then end up with, uh, you know, the cord is sort of choking you up or the cord hits against the guitar and makes a small sound. You want a long enough cord that you've got lots to play with. So that's why usually you go with these kind of, you know, home theater type headphones uh, or for, for sound recording and so on. Again, probably $40 there. So we're not breaking the bank on any of this. The next thing you need is uh, recording software. Now, if you have a Mac, you already have uh, software included, which is GarageBand. I've used that, that program for my first CD. Very user-friendly, easy to use, which is great. Um, if you use PC, you can purchase... Uh, the closest thing I've found to GarageBand, which to me is just as good, is a program called Mixcraft. Again, I'll put the link down below. I think it costs about 40 or $50. Uh, and it basically gives you all the functionality that GarageBand has. So if you want to buy a, a Mac and pay $1,500 for your laptop and get GarageBand included, or you could buy a $600 PC and pay $50 or $60 and get your recording software. So it's up to you how you want to spend your money. Uh, I've had equal results on PC versus Mac recording. So uh, Now that's the, uh, the software. So what you're going to do with that software is that's going to take the signal, the audio signal, coming from your audio interface, the M-Box, and it's going to process that through your computer and it's going to record it into an MP3 or a WAV file or whatever you choose to record as. And then you can edit that software, edit that audio, uh, audio signal. So you can trim the sounds, you can eliminate interference, you can increase the bass, you can lower the bass, you can add another layer of, of sound over top. So if you have your guitar, you can add vocal on top and then a harmony on top. You can delete those layers, change them, etc. So that's what the audio software does for you. So again, you can break the bank and get you know the most expensive kind. Um, but I, you know, I think Pro Tools or something like that is what what a lot of the uh, the industry uh, insiders use. But I just use GarageBand or Mixcraft on my PC. So the the last thing you'll need is uh, some kind of a soundproof booth. Now you can retrofit something in your basement, a closet, or a room in your house for this. What I found works really well because again I don't have the place in an apartment. Uh, I live in a house now but I, even so there's not a, an excess of room to make a studio that I just leave up all the time. So what I developed was uh, a tabletop or a desktop uh, recording booth which basically consists of this. It's two couch cushions. You just take them right off the couch uh, hopefully somebody is not wanting to sit there while you're doing this. Um, and you arrange them in a V formation on top of your desk or your table as it were. Then you take a stick, broomstick, or you know you can get a dowel from the hardware store or a branch off your tree, and you run it across the top. And it works better if you have these little um, spring clamps. You can get those probably at the dollar store. And this just keeps it from sliding around on you. It's not absolutely necessary but you pinch the top of the stick to the cushion. Then you get some heavy blankets and put them over the top like that. And another heavy blanket down on the bottom, the surface of the desk. So you've got one blanket up on top, one blanket down here, 
The cushions are V-shaped, so there's no sound getting in. And what you, in effect, have is a pretty good little soundproof booth. Now, if you want to, you can drape this blanket over your neck as you're sitting in there recording into the booth. If you're playing your guitar, you'd orientate yourself like this, playing, projecting the sound into the soundproof booth, so to speak. Now, this does require quiet in the house, so if you have noisy neighbors, it's not going to necessarily work as well. Um, if you're in an apartment building, you know, maybe you can find a couple hours a day when your, your neighbors are at work or something like that. Or if you, you know, share with your parents or with your, you know, roommates or so on, maybe they're at work or at a hockey game or something at a certain time, you can at least hammer out a few tracks. Um, so what I do is I take my microphone stand, place it right at the edge of this V, angle the microphone into the V, and then I have this little, uh, this little pop stopper which is basically like a little screen that attaches to your microphone so that whenever you make a p sound, it doesn't register that, it sort of overwhelm the microphone with the p. So that's in there and I shove it right to the back of the soundproof booth, sit in front of it with my headphones on, and I record my audio for the vocal. For the, uh, for the guitar, you can also run a patch cord, a standard patch cord into the front of the audio interface. So you could you, you could bypass the need for a microphone at all uh, for your guitar. Personally, I get better results whenever I mic my guitar rather than running the patch cord through the audio interface, but your results may vary. If you want to spend a lot of money on an audio interface, you can get one with a whole bunch of different channels. This one has two channels. That just means you can plug in two instruments or two microphones at the same time. If you wanted to, you could buy some that have several channels and your whole band could play live and record uh, an MP3 right at, this, at the moment. But again, we're trying to do this for as cheap and as compact and as easy as possible. So that's what we've got here. So that's what you absolutely bare bones need. Now, if you're recording uh, uh, drums or other instruments, violin, whatever you might have, the arrangement is very similar. All you have to do is just find the sweet spot where you place that microphone in, re in relation to the instrument that you're trying to mic. So if you have like a, a djembe like a, or a congos, <clears throat> you put the, uh, the microphone sort of further away obviously because you will overwhelm the microphone with that, uh, with that signal because it's very, uh, there's a, a big dynamic range obviously in percussion. For, for vocals, this works great. I'm primarily a folk musician, so I do, you know, guitar, mandolin, and vocals on most of my tracks. Occasionally, I'll throw in some light percussion. I do all my instruments myself. So if you're a DIY musician, and you say are a solo act, this is ideal. You really can't go, you really can't beat it. For the price of a few hours in the recording studio at a professional studio, um, you can have a system that you have permanently, and you can take as long as you want to. If you're someone like me who likes to... Um, experiment with different... I basically sort of come up with my arrangement of the songs while I'm doing it. So I think, oh, it'd be nice to have some glockenspiel there, or some mandolin, or some violin, or something like that. And I haven't picked up a mandolin in three months, um, or whatever it is. I can make 17 mistakes on it, and as long as I get that last track is perfect, and it costs me nothing because no one, there's not a producer just sitting in the booth, sitting there, you know, counting how much money I've got to pay him at the end of all this. So if I make a mistake ten times in a row, big deal, didn't cost me anything. Uh, except my time. And all the while I'm becoming a better musician for it. So this is about as simple as you can get uh, to record yourself at home. I'm going to release another video in this series, number two of the series, and that's going to give you some basic uh, startup on how to actually use this software and the interface. I'll actually show you how I would record uh, guitar and vocal on this um, and run you through the process. I'm not going to get really into the technical um, aspects of mastering, which means once you've got the audio on the computer, how do you transform it and edit it and polish it up? Uh, I'll leave that to the to the experts, but this this would get you started. So if you don't have some of this equipment now, you could run out to the to the the local music shop. That's another thing I didn't mention. The audio interface you usually buy at a music store uh, that sells instruments rather than at, like, say, Staples or uh, Office Depot. Um, so you could run out and spend maybe, you know, three or four hundred dollars, and you would have, you'd be set up with absolutely everything you need to record your, your music at home, for yourself or your band or whatever you want to do. Um, so I hope you found that useful. Stay tuned for the second video in this series. I'm going to show you actually how I record it 
and in a, in a sort of basic sense get you set up for laying down some tracks. A few uh, tips that I've got including some mistakes I made the first few times I tried this. So hopefully you won't make those same mistakes. So this is Jesse Ferguson, uh, also known as the Bard of Cornwall here on YouTube, and I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next one. Thanks. Bye.